this week is just oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. so going Saturday to be outside, was just beautiful. It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be in here. Uh, so, how many of you have? Is this your first visit to the Creation Museum? Awesome, oh, great. Good. Picked a nice, very mm -hmm. nice time of year to come. Mm -hmm. um, not as, not at, quite as busy, mm -hmm. and weather is usually a lot better. Great. Are you all planning on going to the Ark Encounter? Yeah, yeah. Great. Good. I always say you have to do them both. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure you leave one day for both. Definitely. Oh, well, let's see. We still got. Just a little bit more time. All right, in 15. Hi, and welcome to Answers News for August 31st, 2020. So finally done with August, almost, yes. on to September. Mm -hmm. And it's Ladies' Day on Answers Ooh, News, yay, so we yeah. like that. Um, we're kind of taking over, and we all, even three, have doctorates, so that's kind of yeah. cool. Uh, this is Dr. Jennifer Rivera, this is Dr. Gabriella Haynes, and I'm Dr. Georgia Purdom. And um, so we're going to be sharing a lot of different um, news items here with you. And we have a wonderful studio audience with us. Mm -hmm. So make yourselves known. Come on. All right. Great Good. day to visit. The weather's beautiful here. So it, mm -hmm. it's a really great time. If you're thinking about coming out to the museum or the ark, go ahead and do that. It's a great, great um, time of year to do that. All right. So we are going to first talk a little bit about our high school labs here at the Creation Museum. So school is back in session in one way or, the, or another. Um, and for um, homeschoolers, we have a wonderful opportunity to be able to um, come here and do the lab portion of your, of your science classes. So I'm gonna let uh, Jennifer yes. here talk a little bit about that. All right, so we have three high school lab offerings that we're uh, you know, offering this year in the science lab that we have right here at the Creation Museum. Uh, and that's biology, forensics, and chemistry. And we're excited because our biology class is oh, full, yeah. so that's uh, very exciting. We still have a couple spots left in chemistry and forensics, and that registration does close next Monday right. uh, because those labs actually start next week. So mm -hmm. very exciting, but they oh, get yeah. a full year of high school lab practicum right here on site at the Creation Museum from a biblical worldview. Uh, so yeah. we're really excited about yeah. that. Yeah, and I love it too because, you know, science is collaborative. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when mm -hmm. we publish papers, there's always more than one author on it because yeah. you're always working with a lot of different people. And so it's a great way to really mimic um, what real life science is like. Right. Um, and that's what I love about it. So get on um, and we'll put a link there in the comments so you can see that and sign up for that. All right, so our first article we always have, we start with our fluff article, okay, fun article. <laughs> Asteroid headed near Earth the day before Election Day. All right. Ooh. Why am I not surprised, right? <laughs> it, it is 2020, is, yes. It's 2020. Right. Yeah, it is. I right. know. We shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> no. At all. So right? it says it's small. Yeah. Okay. Now, small, now I'm not familiar with asteroids, mm -hmm. but it says that it's the size of a school bus. Okay. That seems it's, kind of, It actually says it's extremely small. Yeah. I don't know. That seems huge to I me. I don't want to think about the big one. So, <laughs> what it was a big one, I don't right? know what it was that one is. So. But here's what's really interesting, because I just wanted to bring this up. They say the chance of the asteroid hitting Earth the day before Election Day is 0.41%, right? right? So, But actually, based on the new published results from the CDC uh, regarding the COVID deaths, there's a 0.00002967 chance of succumbing to COVID-19. Oh, okay. But there's, so there's actually a higher percentage of the asteroid hitting Earth. Right. <laughs> and so, knowing it's 2020, yeah. and, even and if it's size percentage. 0.41, right. I'm concerned. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. we'll see. Mm -hmm. so, but still good out and vote, okay? This is not a reason people to yeah. not get right. out and vote. Okay? It's just extremely small. Don't need to worry about the asteroid. In fact, <laughs> they say right. it'll probably be disintegrated in the atmosphere because it right. is so small. Right, yeah. So we're we'll joking, it's not going to hurt right, you, right. okay, yeah. at all. Right. I mean, it's 2020, anything can happen, but, you know, um, it's not It's not <laughs> going to hurt us if it even enters our atmosphere. Exactly, we don't have to right. Worry about it, it might just so. skim by, they said. So. Right, yeah. right. 
Go, 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 bus. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just see this fiery little thing and it's done with. All right, next. Cliff collapse reveals 313 million year old fossil footprints in Grand Canyon National Park. All right, so these were basically found as people were hiking. Um, and it's kind of funny how, you know, uh, Gabriella is a paleontologist. And so, you know, sometimes you have to dig and dig and dig for things. And other times it's just by the trailhead, the same, you know, yeah. that you're walking mm -hmm. on. And they say that these are the oldest vertebrate tracks um, ever found in the Grand Canyon. Yeah, one yeah. thing that I thought it was funny uh, here that they mentioned, it was that the, they said, um, because of the age of the formation where they found it, it allowed the researchers to pin down the age of the tracks quite precisely to three, 313 million so kind of a little bit more or less um, 0.5 million years. So what in the world? <laughs> yeah. It's just... 500,000, I guess, yeah. you know, yeah, 500,000 years. Plus or minus 0.5 million years. Yeah, <laughs> right. what is that? <laughs> Precisely, I guess, give I or guess take in five. evolutionary yeah. timelines, like, that's not very much. So yeah. No, yeah, yeah that's, that's not much at all. But one thing that we need to know, it's like anything that is a trek, it's just a mark. It, right. it has to be buried really, really fast, or it's just going to be lost. Uh, rain, wind, animals, mm -hmm. anything around. So for us to find tracks, that's something really, really amazing that shows us something really fast happened and buried everything there. So that's why we have those tracks. And of course, it's not about this paper, but for example, we have marks of animals pee, for example. Should I... I yeah, it's okay that. to say that. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's true. Uh, and, and it's right there. So, like, how? It had to be buried really fast, mm -hmm. you know? So that's amazing when they see something like that. It's also, it's impossible for something to be there for 313 million years, and nothing else broke it, the water around, um, mm -hmm. the seismic in the earth, for 313 million I mean, just years, basic erosion and nothing and, happened, yeah. nothing broke, mm -hmm. nothing destroyed yeah. that. It's a miracle. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it's interesting, too, because they said it was actually, they determined based on what you see right there that it was a shelled egg laying animal as mm -hmm. well. I how, don't know. I, how like, how do you I said, how do they know that? Right. Like, from looking at that. Yeah. And so they do talk about how um, they can tell from the footprints, like how it was walking. So they mm -hmm. think it's, it seems like it's a tetrapod, so something like a dog or a cat that walks mm -hmm. on all fours. And I can get how you can understand yeah. its gait, you know, and how mm -hmm. it might have walked, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure how you, like, get much more specific than that. The taxonomy yeah. of the animal. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. So really, you know, like Gabriella was saying, these fossil footprints have to be fossilized quickly or they're not going to be there. We even have fossilized raindrops, you know, or mm -hmm. like raindrop yeah. impressions, mm -hmm. so where right. the rain hit. The only way you're going to get that is if it happens really, really Rapid quickly. Yeah. yeah, that's the only way to explain it, and that's very easily explained in light of the flood. Mm -hmm. All right, so we get on to another um, fun fossil one. The ichthyosaur, this ichthyosaur died after devour devouring a creature nearly as long as itself. So ichthyosaurs are extinct sea creatures, um, and so... Um, they believe, it said they're about 15 feet long, and they believe it swallowed something that was 12 feet long, okay? So that seems pretty weird because... Pretty it's, amazing. It's stomach it's would that. have to be very large. No, but they do, right. They're not telling the story the right. way that it, they should. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, as always, the headlines does not express In this case, it's really, yeah. the truth. So the thing is, the tell they found it somewhere else. Right. It, the, the thing didn't have the head, the animal that he was, it was eating. So the poor thing only ate, ate like a crouton because the tail is gone. The head is gone. It's just like a tiny piece that is safe there. So why they're talking about that they ate right. so much. I know. Because the, the headline definitely makes you think that it actually devoured the entire creature. Right, and that it, which is Because not true. it devoured the entire creature is what most likely killed this particular right. animal because it right. just ate too much. Right. Uh -huh. but do no, don't talk do about that? eating too much. Right. <laughs> I'm this pregnant. Is, this is what it ate, okay, a thadalosaur. But you can see, like, if you take the head and the tail off this thing, it's not right. very big. Not no. Much. Right? I mean, it's it's... Its tail looks like it's about as long as the yeah. rest of its body. Uh -huh. So, I mean, that, or it's about half the size of yeah. its body. So, it's really not that big what it had to swallow. So, that's why I say the headline's extremely mm -hmm. deceptive mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. case. Yeah. Um, 
and, and, again, yeah, go ahead. and again, it shows that it was also uh, fossilized really, really fast because the animal mm. inside was not degraded uh, by stomach acid. Right. It was still there. Mm -hmm. So it just 240 million years. And the animal is still there intact, uh, not uh, degraded. Yeah. So that just shows that all the, the papers that we see, it's interesting because we see those papers all the time, but they keep using the same assumptions and they do not um, agree that something really fast happened. And it's not all those million years, right. you know, because it's impossible. Even like, is this fossil for, there for 240 million? That fossil should that had gone a long time ago because of the seismic of the, the earth and everything that happened, it should have broken and, mm -hmm. and, and be lost. But no, we have so many, so many, many fossils from. It's interesting too, because it says, you know, there's based on what the, you know, the skeletal fossil looks like that the animal probably died of a broken neck. And we actually do though find a lot of fossils with broken necks, right. which kind of points back to, you know, there would have been rapid, when you talk about what happened during the flood. Mm -hmm. Right. Water. There actually mm -hmm. are a lot of fossils that have signs of broken necks from what right. we know mm -hmm. probably would have occurred on the earth during right. the time. Right. But they're, so. they're trying to say, well, maybe yeah. it broke its neck trying to eat this thing. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> the animal's much. not stupid. No. Like, it's going to look at something and know, can I eat that or can I not eat that? Is oh, I need my neck so I can it break not? it. You know? It's not stupid. Yeah, it did no. not and break his neck from eating oh, too much. Story <laughs> <That's> telling. <for> sure. <laughs> no. That they try to come up with to explain, because they say, well, maybe it was like a crocodile. You know, you've seen like crocodiles and alligators, they put something in their mouth oh, and they right, thrash they, around right. with mm -hmm. it. And they said, well, maybe it was doing that and it broke its neck doing that. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's not stupid. You know, no. it knows what to eat, it knows how to eat it. Yeah. it knows but they, they use this it. idea always uh, to show that the animal died, because he's just saying, oh, well, the animal died because it was eating something bigger. But that's the assumption, evolutionary assumption, right. because they have to tell the story mm -hmm. that the animal died. Mm -hmm. But how did he di it die? It died because it was eating too much. Poor <laughs> me. Um, but no, it just it died because of the flood. That's what mm -hmm. we see all the time. The, the fossils that we have, they're a result of the flood. Right. Uh, we got people on here. I'm on the Answers in Genesis Facebook page. Um, people from Queensland, Australia. I see North Carolina just chimed in, Alaska, Southern California. Um, it, it's amazing how you, Vermont, there we go. So you, Switzerland, uh, <laughs> the UK. So people from all over the world, it's just amazing when you look at that mm -hmm. to see how many people are joining in. So hello to everybody, including all those Yeah, I'm here on folk. YouTube and then say like, all right, all girls on Answers News today, <laughs> girls team, yay. Taking it over. <laughs> Which means that Answers News today is going to be until 10 p.m. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> It'll please be all stay. boys please actually stay. on. Go. It'll be all guys on Wednesday. Oh, so, it yeah. probably won't be so, quite as exciting. Only fair. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Mega church pastor. Abortion is consistent with Christianity and I will fight to keep it legal. All right. So this is kind of one of those unbelievable headlines, but sadly it actually is the truth. So this is... Um, uh, find his name here, Raphael Warnock, who is the pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, which is a 6,000 member church, right? And something interesting to keep in mind is that Ebenezer Baptist was the um, church of Martin Luther King Sr. and Martin Luther King Jr. Um, they both pastored this mm -hmm. church in the past. So just, again, it's had a conservative past, but now it's definitely going in a very different direction. So this pastor basically um, says that I mean, he's running for the Senate. So he's not only a pastor, but he's running for the Senate. And he believes, and I quote, health care is a human right. And I believe that is something that the richest nation in the world provides for its citizens. And for me, reproductive justice is consistent with my commitment to that. Okay, but here's these words, reproductive justice, mm -hmm. right? Health care. Reproductive health care is what they call it sometimes. That's just mm -hmm. fancy names for abortion is all that is. You know, From that's killing, what he's fighting for. murdering a baby. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. And I said, I believe the health care, it's a human right. So he's saying that a baby is not a human then? And we have, mm -hmm. we have heard this a lot in the history of the world when they were putting people and saying they were not human. That yeah. We know what that happened with the Jews right. uh, because they were saying they were not human. Mm -hmm. And now they're saying kids, babies are not uh, humans. And every time in this paper he mentions like, oh, this is, this, uh, the woman should decide that with her minister, um, 
her doctor. That's my view as a minister. That's my view as a ministry. I'm sorry, we don't really, your, your opinion, your view doesn't really mind here, but God's word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God's word is the authority. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, it's not, it's not your view that it's important, but what God thinks, what it's important. Right. And they're always relating this back to health care. They always try to take abortion and relate it back to health care. Right. And it really has nothing to health do with health care. Who? Right. Yeah, health care of who? Yeah, exactly. Oh, not, a, not the baby. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's and not, not the baby. The it's, it's not the baby. And not even the woman. Right. Because, yeah. like, we know statistically that a woman that go through this process of abortion, they have the right uh, level of, of depression or suicide, mm-hmm. you know, all of like those regret problems. regret for the rest of their life. Regret often. and, like, yep. problems mm-hmm. in, in the yeah. body and problems to get pregnant again. Mm-hmm. You know, all of that, because deep, 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 deep in their heart, they know what they did. Right, mm-hmm. yeah. right. They know what that happened. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting. So somebody was interviewing him, said, um, this pastor, interviewed this pastor, said, do you think it's consistent with God's view that God endorses the millions of abortions we've had in this country since Roe v. Wade? Okay, so that's a very pointed question, right? And what is his answer? I think that human agency and freedom is consistent with my view as a minister. Now, first of all, that's dodging the question. Oh, he didn't even answer the question, right? right? Yeah. Secondly, Mm -hmm. again, you know, human agency, freedom, he says, my view, right? But it's, again, as a pastor, we would hope that your view, or it should be that your view is whatever God's word (laughs) says. It should align with that. It should be Mm -hmm. the same as that, right? It's not, I mean, you know, I would say he needs to define what Christian means. Because yeah. it isn't how we define Christianity. Not how no. we define Christianity. It isn't yeah. how the Bible, I mean, it isn't how God's word defines Christianity. And you know it's a big problem when Planned Parenthood endorses a minister. Because now he's been backed by Planned Parenthood. And that tells you a yeah. lot right there. Yeah. Ooh. Mm-hmm. You need to be leaving that church. I'm just saying, because that is, that oh, is definitely, really bad news. Definitely. And the problem yeah. is, unfortunately, when someone, because we have, there are people that try to hide things. He's not trying to hide anything right here. Right. So probably more bad stuff might be coming um, mm-hmm. from someone that believes that killing babies is something consistent with the Bible and Christianity. Well, once they compromise on one topic, it's just a matter right. of time before they well, compromise. Well, that's what I was going to say, yeah. because this yeah. church is the affiliated with the Progressive mm-hmm. National Baptist Convention. So this yeah. is not a conservative denomination mm-hmm. at all. Um, and so, like say, once you open the door to one, I mean, I'm not surprised in that yeah. sense, because yeah. Um, they're okay with abortion. They're probably going to be okay with a lot of other things as well um, that we would not consider in line with what God's word says. So yeah, that's the, it, it's so sad when you hear that. You know, it's bad enough that there are people that are pro, you know, murder, pro abortion, but when people that claim to be Christians and claim to be Christian ministers mm-hmm. are saying that, it's just, it's really a sad reflection on um, on Christianity today and why we need to really, as Christians, stand up for the truth of God's word and combat these evils, not just in the world at large, but even within the Christianity itself. Okay, somebody said um, false shepherds will be judged more harshly. Mm -hmm. Um, That is true. That is very, very true. Because I I don't see how you can call yourself a Christian and say that's okay. Um, Mm -hmm. I I just, that's really, really challenging. Okay, um, so this next article relates to this one. Tony Dungy on pro-choice pastors. What are they reading? It couldn't be the Bible. I <laughs> love this yes, article. This was okay. a great article. Um, so Tony Dungy is a um, television commentator and an NFL analyst, okay? And um, so he is actually talking about this particular pastor. Mm-hmm. and what. So he took a stand for life. Um, he, he really did. He's a Christian who's taking mm-hmm. a stand for life. And so this was like mm-hmm. a series of tweets that he did. And the, the one he said, he says, when you say a minister, quote unquote, does that mean they represent a church? Right? Because he's been told about this pastor that supports abortion. I'd like to know what book the candidate uses as their foundation for truth and their guiding principles. It couldn't be the Bible. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. good. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. It can't be. Because I think it's important too, just to this, um, you know, the senator, who, this man who's running for Senate office in Atlanta, he believes in all forms of abortion. It's not like he's even limiting that. He believes in any type of abortion, full-time abortion, whatever it takes, basically, abortion is what he supports. And he's clearly said, it quoted, that God is cool with it, you know, he said. Yeah, I, I don't think so. And it, I don't know if everybody understands what it's 
all the ideas of abortion is when sometimes they even agree that nine months mm -hmm. old, like right, right after the mom has the baby, yeah. if she wants right. to kill the baby right there, right. Yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Right. That's, that's what they're yeah. saying. That's just, yeah. it's just like totally out. And you mm -hmm. say that it's consistent with God, God's word. He said God is cool with it. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, one of the one of the other. I think yeah. it was the guy that was interviewing mm -hmm. the uh, the pastor that's pro abortion said, you know, that well, this pastor is basically saying God's cool right. with abortion, and and you know the thing is is like so people kept pushing back against Dungy, of course, you know, because when you're on social media, and someone said, well, where does the Bible mention abortion? And Dungy said, read Psalm 139. If you believe the Bible is the word of God, you can't read this and conclude that God doesn't view a baby in the womb as a life. Yeah. You know, absolutely. I love mm -hmm. how he's referring people back to God. He yeah, always does over word. and over again. Right. And even when one person said, uh, you know, well, religion has no place in government, you know, and he says, well, if you don't believe bi the Bible, if you don't believe the Bible, there's nothing I can say to convince you. But why do you then think it's wrong to kill someone who has been born, yeah. who's decided that's wrong? Why is it wrong? Right. There's nothing yeah. to fall back on. There's no moral principles if you don't have the Bible. Right. Right. Yeah. Without, so. without God, everything is permissive. Right, mm -hmm. right. I love that he, he's really being what we call very presuppositional. Yes. So he's saying the Bible is the foundation of which we view everything else. It's the, found, it's the foundational mm -hmm. um, basis, you know, and everything else is viewed in light of that. And so I, I love that he's doing that because he's saying we don't have a basis for right and wrong mm -hmm. if we don't start with God's word. And then it's just everyone's opinion. It's up to everyone. I right. mean, why couldn't Dungy take out a gun and shoot someone? I mean, what mm -hmm. makes right. that wrong? Right. Well, and, and Dungy realizes that it's the word of God that makes that mm -hmm. wrong. You know, it's because it's wrong to murder. And so I love that he's really bringing um, that out. You know, he's starting with the word of God and saying, this is why, you know, this country was founded on biblical principles, right? And that's mm -hmm. why we have laws that we do. Um, and, and they come from God's word. You know, people don't want to think about that, but it's true. <laughs> and, and, um, and, and I see that's, I'm not from here. I don't know if anyone knew that. Um, but I think that's one of the reasons that the United States of America has been so blessed, you know, over the, the, the years. And it's, it's a big nation. It's a strong nation. It's a nation that other countries respect and admire. And that's why, because here we have the foundation. And that's what we have to keep having the foundation mm -hmm. of, uh, mm -hmm. of God's word as a foundation for everything that we do. And the problem is here too, if we don't have the right of life, what else is left? Right. Mm -hmm. What else? Yeah. What else are we going to fight for? If you don't have the right to live, what else are you going to fight for? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody on um, here quoted Isaiah uh, 5 20 about woe to those who call evil good and good evil. You know, that, mm -hmm. that's really yeah. what we're seeing. And we'll have another article here shortly um, that really, really focuses on that idea. And we're seeing it over and over again. And, and that's what we should expect, sadly, um, because we live in a fallen world. And that's why we do what we do, because we need to, these people need the gospel desperately. Mm -hmm. um, they need to know God's word. All right, so this next article, oh, Gabriella can't wait to talk about With this With pleasure, one. please. All right. This dinosaur may have shed its feathers like modern songbirds. All right, I'm just going to let you talk. Okay, thank you. Because <laughs> so, you like this one. Yeah, this one I love. That, that has been one of the things that I have been studying, and I have been amazed by the mess that th they have done. So here, just for you to have an idea, it's just saying like, this is the evidence of a numbered dinosaur. Numbered dinosaur. What does it mean? Yeah. You know, it's just like they're using, and, and we can see this in everything. The word today doesn't really have the power that it should have. Like the meaning is just lost. And that's a problem because we have to base our lives in God's word. So once that you, you lose the meaning of word. So mm -hmm. they, they try to play a lot that, especially in a scientific uh, a feud too. So here they found a bird, okay, and they're saying that it's calling a dinosaur. The problem is because of evolutionary assumptions, now they're putting dinosaurs and birds all together in the same group. So when they find a bird, what they call 
dinosaur. And then he, that's why they're saying, like, we found a dinosaur molting. Well, that's a bird, okay? <laughs> it's not a dinosaur. It's not it's a, a dinosaur. It's just the way that they, they're changing the meaning, the way that they're putting things in taxonomy is just, is just a mess. And just for you to have an idea, for example, the Microraptor is the one that they found um, molting. Um, it's to gather in the group of other birds and other, uh, which they call dinosaurs, that have all the anatomy, all the, the, the characteristics of birds. But what they do, they're calling birds dinosaurs. So we have to be, we have to have that in our mind that um, sometimes when they say a word, that does not mean what we think it means. So we have to go and check the things. For just to have an idea, the structure of the tail, the, the pubic bone, the wrist, the whole anatomy, even like they're found with feathers, real feathers, um, it's in this group. So Microraptor, it's not a dinosaur. It's a bird. It's a true bird. And even like when you see the fossil, it just, it's totally a bird. You know, we don't have the pictures of the fossil, right? Right. Um, uh, it's no. totally a bird. Everything about the fossil, oh, okay. it's yeah, a bird. Yeah, they do actually right here. Yeah, there. So there. Okay, there you is. can see just the tail, the tail, the way the tail is and the feathers and everything else. It's just like a bird, but they're calling that dinosaur just because evolutionary assumption. So that's, that's something that we have to be aware of because they have changed the names. Just for you to have an idea, apes and birds are not the same thing. <laughs> They have changed the meaning of what it's apes, what it's birds. So just for you to have an idea, the whole situation that they're putting based on evolutionary assumptions. But no, this thing here, it's a bird. That's why it's molting. Right. Well, it's, yeah, it should say this bird. Bird. Right. <laughs> May have said it's feathers like modern songbirds. Okay, well, that makes sense because yeah, it's that's a bird. Cool. It, bird, and that's it what molted birds do. then just like it molts now. Yeah. Right? It's nothing yeah. good for you, bird. Yeah. Yeah. But then it probably wouldn't have made science news, though. Yeah. Right. But that's how they, it, cause yeah. that's how they try to, because see, even the pictures here, right? right. They're trying to make, make it, it look, look very like dinosaur-like dinosaur uh -huh. right. with feathers. Because right? no one knows it looked like that. <laughs> no. So, we no. don't have, we don't have collars. We don't have all of that information right. fossil. Sometimes we wish we had, but we don't have all of that. This is artistic. Mm -hmm. um, right. Impression. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, of how they want it to look. How they <laughs> yeah. want it to so, look. So, yeah. Yes. And, and even the right. fossil evidence for this was pretty sparse. I mean, mm -hmm. it was only like three feathers like that were, Three you short know, feathers, like three tiny, little, tiny feathers. feathers they and said. they're like, oh, it was yeah. molting. And I'm like, seriously, how do you know that? <laughs> I, I mean, mean again, yeah. no yeah. paleontologist. Those four but. feathers are just like because flying birds got I mean, there. And then I was just birds like, have oh, like molting. five different kinds of feathers on their one body. God yeah. designed uh -huh. them that way. So to find short feathers and long feathers does not necessarily mean it was molting anyway. Right. So. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Interpretation. Yeah. All right. New um, Netflix film shows 11-year-old girls imitating, um, I won't say that word on air, but hypersexualized dance routines. Okay. So this is like, this kind of blew up in the media um, because it's, it's a Netflix show and this is why Netflix is very problematic because this isn't the only show on there that has things like mm -hmm. this. But basically, um, this is the, a French film. Uh, originally, it's a French film called, um, I won't pronounce it in French because I don't know how to pronounce French, but it's called Cuties in English. And it follows the story of 11-year-old Amy, okay, 11 years old, who's a Singalese um, Muslim girl who lives in a poor neighborhood in France, and she joins a group of other young girls who perform hypersexualized dance routines. Mm -hmm. You know, because that will help her fit in. Mm-hmm. You know, doing this kind of thing. Eleven years old, right? Eleven. A bunch of they, and all the girls in the show look like they're eleven yeah. years old. I mean, I mean, this is young, a right? clean. I mean, this is the new mm -hmm. photo that Netflix is showing for this. I would not even put on the air the photo they were showing originally. It's awful. I mean, mm -hmm. and and what is this really doing? Is this prepping people to accept pedophilia? It's accepting, it's trying to get people to, and now those people, they're not even called pedophiles now, they're called minor attracted persons, mm -hmm. okay? So if you have a love of children, not the love like a parent right. to child, yes. but a, a sexualized right. Right, type of love, that you're yes. a minor attracted person. They're trying to get you to say that's okay and, and go along with that. Changing words again. Bingo. Yeah. 
yep. changing yep. words mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. They're trying to say something that it's bad in a way that it sounded not as bad. So, and this is just like putting woman, we as woman, in danger. Like mm -hmm. kids, oh. Oh, little definitely. kids, yes, little girls in danger because sometimes I just think I was like, what kind of world are we living? Because yeah. it's just so insane to see 11 years old girls doing something like that. And they just rescued, like, how many of those children in, uh, down in, I think it was, was it Georgia or something mm -hmm. over the weekend um, who had been sex trafficked? Right. And yet they're... In, they're promoting oh, the very just, thing they're trafficking them for, yes, basically, yeah. yeah and crazy. I think what was so disturbing, too, was the director, when she was kind of called out on why would she uh, do a show like right, this. Right, right kind of tried to almost, I guess, protect herself by saying, well, I did it because I wanted to bring attention to this matter, but yet you're promoting it. So it's yeah. showing it in a right. good it, light. It, yeah, yeah, she was just, I think, just Whatever trying to cover that is, up. quote unquote. You know, yeah, just the promote, she yeah, did the show. she's just yeah. promoting. And yeah. I think, too, it's what's so important to realize about this, part of the theme of the show, definitely, because I did go watch the little trailer because I just wanted to understand what they were really talking about is they make it very clear that this girl's growing up in a Muslim neighborhood, in a Muslim family, mm -hmm. and she is breaking free of her yep. restrictive religious family, yeah. and she's kind of finding herself. And so they're always taking it back to that as well. Oh, yeah. Right? You want yeah. to free yourself from your parents' religion, basically. Right. Right. Um, and that's very, very clear in this film as well. And free so. yourself from the family traditions. So mm -hmm. it's always yep. putting those kids and teenagers against the family, against the yep. tradition mm -hmm. of the family. Mm -hmm. Now your mom and dad are your enemies. You know, you have to break free and be, mm -hmm. uh, feel free for those things. Um, but it just... And, right. and this also says, like, she started to explore her femininity. Mm-hmm. That's not femininity at that's all. That's not femininity. No. No. no that's not no, femininity no. at all. No. And it's, it's no. sad to think that, you know, these, they're 11. They sh I'm sorry. I mean, they should be girls and all that, mm -hmm. but exploring, I don't remember exploring my femininity at 11, <laughs> you know? I mean, they need to be kids. Let kids be kids. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, instead of turning them into these, you know, yeah, hypersexualized. I played, I played with balls until I was 17. <laughs> yeah. And I still miss it. <laughs> And there's so, a big issue here, too, But we I have think, a great with, uh, alternative right. to Netflix <laughs> well, that's for you. True. Okay? Yes. So Answers.TV is our brand new streaming platform. And you're not going to find shows like that on here. No. Praise the Lord for that, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to find, yeah. like, there's, the there's close to 2,000 videos on here now. With, and there's really shows for everybody, whether it's mm -hmm. adults or teens or kids. And um, you don't have to worry about stuff like this coming up, you know, mm -hmm. on there. Um, this program, Answers News, is on there. Um, and so lots of really good it's Lots um, of great content. kids shows. You could actually sit your kid down right. in front of this while you're making yeah. dinner and not worry. Yeah. Because right. there's exactly. nothing they could exactly. click on that would be inappropriate. All right, we got time for one more because I want to talk about this one. Because yes. the guys on Thursday <laughs> okay. won't want to talk about this one because um, they're not scientists and I am. So, um, <laughs> so, strange forms of vitamins called antivitamins may fight antibiotic resistant superbugs. All right, so antibiotic resistant bacteria continue to be a problem, okay? Mm -hmm. Things like MRSA, um, even things that used to be very treatable, like gonorrhea, which is an STD, they kill 700,000 people a year, okay? So that's significant, and they're continuing to do that. And so they're always looking for ways to, to kill these bugs that won't die any other way. Um, and so they have found things called antivitamins. So they're very similar to regular vitamins, like mm -hmm. we would take, but one molecule in it is different. And so... Um, what happens with the bacteria is they don't recognize the difference, okay, because it's so similar. They take it up, and then it, like, throws a kink in it, you know, right? And it kills the bacteria. Um, and what seems to be, and this is kind of amazing to me, and, and again, this is computer modeling right now, so we'll have to see if this continues right. to hold true. But human enzymes um, will take up that antivitamin, mm -hmm. and they don't seem to be affected by it. Um, it seems to be okay. So you want something like that. You want something that specifically it's targeting the mm -hmm. bacteria and not targeting the human being and taking, them back, taking the, um, antivitamin, right, the antivitamin, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's really neat to see how um, these mm -hmm. things that we're still learning about, and still, I, like I said, I'd never heard of antivitamin, um, but most of these are against... Um, vitamins, vitamin B, so different versions mm -hmm. of the B vitamin. And so it could be a very useful thing. So I was like, we got to have some good news, you know, <laughs> like um, we want, 
we like good observational mm -hmm. science yeah. where mm -hmm. we can find out in a cursed world, in a fallen world, I always say how to reverse the curse, right? That's what mm -hmm. we're trying to do. And this is a great way um, that they're doing it. And towards the end of the article, of course, they say nature has evolved, okay, <laughs> enzyme systems. No, nature hasn't. Okay. Nature God, is not a person, okay? Right. Nature is not a person. It's just a concept. God designed these enzymes, right? And yeah. and there's these ways, I think even in a fallen world, that God has provided ways for us to be able to combat, um, you know, these antibiotic resistant mm -hmm. um, bacteria and do that. So anyways, all right, we're out of time for today. So we hope that you enjoyed it and we'll see you back on Wednesday. Okay.